are day two of GSR 17, and I'm with Oliver Gale of Bit Inc. Yeah, Great to have you with us. Yeah, pleasure to be here. All right, so tell us about Bit Inc. Exactly what is it? How long have you been around? What do you do? So in 2013, we started uh, Bit in Barbados, mm -hmm. um, having discovered uh, blockchain technology and Bitcoin and the power of the ability to decentralize. Uh, transactions and instruments of money. Mm -hmm. um, my partner and I saw an opportunity to improve the financial system, improve financial access, and generally speaking, um, bring new innovation and technology to a sector which has not really innovated, and that being the payment system in right. you know 40 years. So that was a uh, that was the genesis of the organization. Okay. Um, so people might be familiar with Bitcoin, but break it down for us, some blockchain technology. Exactly what is that? Right. So Bitcoin was the first application of blockchain mm -hmm. technology. So it's the, it's the most secure blockchain, and it's been uh, running for the longest time. Um, however, blockchain technology is, uh, at its heart, it's a set of distributed databases or ledgers mm -hmm. that allow um, groups to achieve consensus. So when you think of, and that sounds a little confusing, but when you think of things like um, who is responsible for creation of money or who is responsible for my land title mm -hmm. deeds or um, how do I prove that a unique good exists digitally, mm -hmm. you can do that more easily by having databases around the world that reach an agreement using open source code, which means anyone can view it, anyone can join a network, anyone can participate in the network, and it, really it's a huge leveler of the playing field and um, in multiple industries. Mm -hmm. uh, Internet of Things is a, a store of value in Internet of Things at two applications, but blockchain technology has been heralded as the biggest thing since the internet. Right, right. So are you affiliated with Bitcoin in any way? Bit is agnostic to uh, blockchains. Okay. So, you know, there's a huge experimentation going on. There are thousands of these distributed ledgers which exist. If rap the pace of innovation is rapid. Wow. Bitcoin's blockchain is one blockchain that we use because of its security features. It's been in a production environment since uh, late 2009, early 2010, so it has a long track record. But in creating a payment network, because that is what BIT is doing, is creating a payment network from the central bank level mm -hmm. where you can issue digital cash onto a blockchain down to the banking level where banks can transfer value um, cross borders uh, more easily, more securely, with greater accountability and auditability. And then ultimately at, at the base level is the end user and people who don't have financial access, people who are not included in the banking system or don't have the ability to process payments because it's too expensive, it's too cumbersome, right. or they lack means of accessing a payment system. So mm -hmm. from top to bottom, our vision and mission is to empower people and to do so financially by making sure that they have access right. to a cheap and secure payment network. Right. So we're at a symposium for regulators. Who should be regulating companies like BIT? Um, should it be central banks? Should it be telecoms regulators? Both? I How would does it work? say certainly uh, the central bank, the Ministry of Finance or the equivalent body should be responsible for uh, any sort of payment network, payment industry, uh, instrument storage of funds on behalf of a user. Mm -hmm. But there's also a role for ICT regulators in terms of cybersecurity, data privacy, because as we move increasingly to a world where uh, value is stored in online environments, you need to have consumer protection accounted for and not just from the payment system. What is the integrity of the infrastructure? Have there been any challenges in that regard in Barbados? There are challenges globally. The mm -hmm. problems are not um, limited to Barbados. Mm -hmm. And the challenge has been that the technology and the pace of it has been rapidly progressing. Mm -hmm. And regulators are, um, as is normally the case, slow to respond. But 
what is now happening is regulators internationally, especially in the more you know, sophisticated economies where there are more resources available, are finding ways to say, right, we're going to facilitate innovation. Singapore is, is at the front of that right. charge once again. And unfortunately, we're finding um, that the pace in the Caribbean is not serving the interests yeah. of the Caribbean yeah. and the people in the Caribbean. You mentioned um, during your presentation about um, having to travel between countries, how difficult that is, yeah. and how there should be this common currency, essentially, between at least CARICOM nations. Yeah, I think, you know, it's one of the, it's, it's on the agenda for CARICOM is to have a single market economy. Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not convinced that it's necessary to have a single currency for all of the islands. What you can do is have multiple currencies so each central bank maintains their their ability and right to issue currency for the nation. And that provides a lot of support to the economies, but at the same time, you can create uh, a sort of a multilateral clearing facility where Barbados can do trade with Trinidad without having to go through right. the US dollar or the European um, or the euro or the pound or you know the renminbi we should be able as independent nations to transfer value and do business with one another without having to return to um, an international currency at all times mm -hmm. and blockchain technology enables this so what does the future hold where do we where do you see yourselves in five years, ten years, your um, company and the industry in general? Yeah, well, I think um, I think as far as the industry in general goes, we've seen massive growth in uh, blockchain technologies, uh, protocols that use it, applications in insurance, applications in uh, distributed computer power processing, distributed storage, decentralized currencies mm -hmm. and so in five years I think we're going to have a lot of the we're going to have a lot more of these services provided for the end user they're going to look very familiar mm -hmm. it will look like Dropbox for example right. but it will be much cheaper it will look like uh, a mobile wallet um, provided by a bank or a PayPal but it will be much cheaper it will be more secure it will be more readily audited and you know, within that context, um, as far as BIT is concerned, I see, uh, based on our trajectory, that we will be able to connect people directly to one another to allow, allow them to effectively have a bank in their, in their hand. Wow. They will be able to have custody of their assets. They will be able to transfer value. Merchants will be able to accept um, payments from around the world. Not just, I mean, if I'm in Trinidad, I should be able to accept payments from around the world and not just with Visa or MasterCard. I should be able to accept Bitcoin or Ethereum or a digital cash instrument issued by uh, the Central Bank of China or the um, um, Bank of England. All of these central banks are experimenting with blockchain technology. Right. So it's going to be exciting because what it means is, as a young entrepreneur or business person, mm -hmm you can translate your innovative idea, your business idea into a online product, right. which you can sell to anyone in the world or anyone within the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And you know, our, our vision is to provide the support and infrastructure so that banks and people and nations can be connected right. globally. So it sounds like in this regard, at least things will get simpler. Or should it will, it yeah. will. I mean, the, it, by the time by the time the hurdles are crossed mm -hmm. and someone has a device in their hand and they're using an application, that's mm -hmm. going to be that easy. Yeah. Right. You know, so the good news is the change is inevitable. Yeah. It's happening. It will happen. It's happening around the world. Um, right now, it's just a matter of crossing hurdles and trying to make sure that the Caribbean is in the picture. And, you know, it would be, it would be fantastic if we can stay on the forefront or get on the forefront. We managed to do it in sports. Yep. We managed to do it in entertainment. Right. I don't see why we can't do it in financial services. I don't see why we can't do it in online commerce, mm -hmm. right? We, it's one of the most beautiful areas in the world. Absolutely. Some of the greatest people in the world. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have to be um, 
in the United States or Europe to serve United States and European customers, then now let's choose where your head office right. is going to be. You Why want not? it to be in the cold or do you want it to be next to a beach? Sounds so I, I, perfect you know, almost. Yeah, I, I, we have so much potential. Uh, we have so much potential because we're blessed. Every one of our islands is blessed. Yeah, exactly. Oliver Gale, thank you so much. Thank you. Pleasure talking to you. You too. Cheers. Thank you.